What's cracking, big dogs? Y'all thought you were in for a long symphonic intro right there. Symphonic, is that a word? Is that how you describe a symphony? This is going to be a ridiculous episode. It's going to be probably a short one. The last two weeks, we've done nothing but talk about our running back rankings. A lot of you guys were like, yo, there are other positions in fantasy football, bruv. Can you, can you talk about... I'm trying to do an English accent. Bruv, can you talk about wide receivers? That was pretty good. Maybe that was an Australian accent. I said, fuck yeah, I could talk about wide receivers, brother. So we're going to talk about wide receiver rankings. Today is going to be the first tier of wide receiver rankings because the way I see it, there is there's a group of guys, a handful of dudes that are the elite of the elite when it comes to fantasy football in 2020. And then all hell breaks loose after the first tier of guys. So I'm just going to talk about the first tier. Y'all know their names. Y'all know what they do on the field. They've been around for a while. They've produced for a while. Therefore, I won't talk to you for a while. I'm filming this on Friday before Memorial Day weekend. Despite COVID, I'm trying to have a little bit of fun this weekend. So we're going to keep things nice and fun and short so that it doesn't take me all weekend to edit this and upload and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to hit you with the big facts as always. If you enjoy the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, stop yelling, tuck your shirts in. <clears throat> Let's eat. Speaking of stop yelling, I have a, a very brand new podcast in the works. The name of it's called Why You Yelling, where I'm going to be doing a daily, a daily podcast about five to 10 minutes long. I don't know if it's going to be up in iTunes yet by the time y'all hear this, but I will link it below if it is five to 10 minutes. First topic that pops into my mind when I wake up that morning or from the night before, I'm just going to dive into it. It might be business. It might be personal. It might be relationships. It might be football. I don't fucking know. Whatever dives into my mind is going to dive onto the this thing, the, the microphone. It's going to be a way for me to kind of just journal my thoughts in real time via audio. And I'm going to try my best not to yell. So I ask y'all, why are you yelling? I hope y'all will give that a listen. Real quick listen. Again, five to 10 minutes, probably Monday through Friday. We'll have guests on it to talk about all different life topics. I'm really, really actually excited for this to take off and to dive into something new outside of just football. Let's talk wide receivers. If at any point you do want the top 24 running back rankings, that link will be down below in the description as well. Well, with very, very, very little surprise here, we have the wide receiver one going off the board, Michael Thomas. New Orleans Saints breaking records like it's his fucking job last year, currently going off the board at the 106 as the wide receiver one. I mean, what changes going into this offseason? He's 27. You want to talk about walking into the eye of the storm? Michael Thomas is walking into the eye of his prime. Seen a lot of ignorant nonsense on Twitter over the last week or two, you know, with Michael Thomas getting into the spat with Devontae Parker. People are like, oh yeah, Michael Thomas's average depth of throw. He's like the Alex Smith of, of wide receivers. Like just real ignorant shit. It's like, what do you want him to do? The offense for the Saints is revolving around keeping Drew Brees healthy, having a good offensive line and getting the ball out of his hands quickly, whether it's to a running back or it's to Michael Thomas. Those are the only options in that offense. He does what he's asked to do. You want to know why he doesn't get a lot of deep targets? You want to know why only 4% of his targets were downfield? Dead last in the the NFL last year because Sean Payton is an offensive genius and he knows exactly how to use his fucking players. Michael Thomas was using the slot at a very high rate last year. Using very good receivers in the slot is one of the biggest offensive mismatches NFL offenses, NFL teams can use in today's world. Because for some fucking reason, defensive coordinators haven't realized that they are actually allowed to move good cornerbacks into the slot. They leave their cornerbacks on the outside, so Michael Thomas comes into the slot and they say, nope, you're not allowed, you stay your fucking ass by the sidelines, the slot cornerback or the linebacker or a safety is going to cover Michael Thomas because I am a really good fucking defensive coordinator. And that's how this works. When he was running routes from the slot, he he was targeted on 34.8% of those routes. That target share, 30, nearly 35%, the highest among any wide receiver when running out of the slot. You want to know who finished right behind him on that list in terms of percentage of targets or target share while running from the slot? Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins, Cooper Cup, Julio Jones. You put your best wide receiver into the slot, they will get separation from that shitty defender who is not their top cornerback like it's fucking COVID and they're doing social distancing over here. That's why that list of people who get that target share, that a massive target share is all the best wide receivers because you put the best wide receivers in the slot, they can't be covered by these non-plus defenders. The only change in this offense is that they bring in Emmanuel Sanders. Sure, he's coming over, but this is more of a, a real life good thing for 
the Saints than it is fantasy football. I, I don't think this is going to impact Michael Thomas whatsoever. I mean, Traquan Smith ran 61% of his routes from the slot last year. Didn't affect Michael Thomas. Sanders only ran 35% of his routes from the slot last year. And if you think the Saints, who have used Michael Thomas to absolute perfection, are just going to alter their entire offense and change what worked in order to satisfy Emmanuel Sanders, you're insane. Move along here. Michael Thomas, wide receiver one, 106 off the board. Makes sense. My wide receiver two, Green Bay Packers, Devontae Adams. He's currently going off the board at the 110 as the wide receiver two. If y'all remember last year, I was so fucking excited about Devontae Adams going into the year. I thought that Adams last year was going to have a Michael Thomas-esque season. What Michael Thomas did last year, I thought Devontae Adams was going to do. I think I might have been a year early because I'm right back on the Adams train. If you look at Adams' 2019 season, he played in 12 games, 127 targets, 83 receptions, 995 receiving yards, five touchdowns, 14.25 fantasy points per game. If you pace that out to a full 16, he's getting 170 targets, catching 111 passes, 1,327 yards, seven touchdowns. Now, the way a lot of people, especially the Devontae Adams owners, I know a lot of Devontae Adams owners are going to be sour about this. You got to play football with, you got to play fantasy football with logic, not emotion. We remember how he started out. Super, super disappointing. Those first four weeks of the season, he got hurt in week four. Those first four weeks of the season, he didn't score a single touchdown. He did have two games of over 100 yards, including that 180-yard performance in which he actually got hurt in. But it was the first, it, w- it was their first games under Matt LaFour's offense. And I think we all remember how funky that offense looked like they were not clicking the timing was not right and that I think can be chalked up to the fact that it was the first few games in a new offensive scheme those things take time to click in real football but when we saw Adams return later on it was like week nine week 10 you know he had that long stretch of injury where he sat out when he came back we saw the elite production of Demonte Adams that we remembered him putting up this dude finished so 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 strong From weeks 10 through the end of the season, I'm going to include the playoff games because I think that's predictive of what we're going to see with Devontae Adams in this offense. Their first playoff game against Seattle, 11 targets, 8 catches, 160 yards, 2 touchdowns. The next game, the loss to San Fran, 11 targets, 9 catches, 138 yards. So you look at Devontae Adams, weeks 10 through the conference championship, which is a full 9 games. 11.3 11.3 targets a game, 7.6 receptions a game, 97.3 yards a game, seven total touchdowns. So seven touchdowns in nine games, averaging almost 100 yards a game. That's 18.2 half PPR points a game. Last year, Michael Thomas, record-breaking, shattering year, averaged 18.8 fantasy points per game. So when you look at Devontae Adams' season, you look at the target numbers, weeks one, two, and three, eight, nine, and four. They look like outliers for the rest of the season. So if you take out, I know we don't just want to like take out things, but I think it makes sense given the offense. It was a new offense, and then we saw him absolutely get rolling. You cross those out, and you're looking at just massive, massive target numbers for Devontae Adams week over week, 15, 11, 10, 12, 10, 6, 13, 16, 13, 11, 11. The biggest takeaway here, of course, of course. The reason Devontae Adams is still up here is that they added absolutely nothing to this receiving group. No Robbie Anderson, no first round wide receiver, no second round wide receiver, or third or fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh round wide receiver. I mean, Adams is a clear cut elite wide receiver in fantasy. He's going to see 30% of the overall target share. He'll see 35% of the red zone target share that he has over the last four seasons. This team can still go heavy on the ground, but Adams is the and only top option for Aaron Rodgers if they go a little less heavy on the ground near the red zone inside the 10 yard line we know Aaron Jones is ridiculously efficient when it comes to inside the 10 yard line carries but if they go a little less volume there and throw a little more through the air Adams should be up by that double digit touchdown number with ease again it would not surprise me whatsoever the point I'm getting at is it would not surprise me whatsoever if Devontae Adams does finish as the number one overall wide receiver this year in fantasy mark it down you bish Number three, Tyree Kill, Kansas City Chiefs, currently going off the board as the wide receiver three at the 202. I really wanted to put Tyree Kill as a wide receiver two. I think when you just look at it from an objective perspective, you're like the clear wide receiver one for the best pure passer that we have in the game right now in Patrick Mahomes. But I just think the week over week consistency that we're going to get from Adams, I mean, again, you look at those target numbers, 15, 11, 10, 12, 10, 13, 16, 13, whatever. That's going to Donald Trump anything that Terry Kill pretty much brings to the table when you're talking about elite production. I would obviously be happy, extremely happy with Terry Kill's my wide receiver one. No two ways about it. But we don't know on a given week who the focal point of this offense is
is going to be through the air. It could be a Travis Kelsey week. It could be a running back week on any given week. And he can connect with McCole Hardman or then Demarcus Robinson any given throw instead of Tyree Kill, which is what makes him a little bit more inconsistent. So last year, Tyree Kill uh, technically appeared in 12 games. He played in 10% or fewer of the snaps in week one and then in week 11 because of the injury. So we're looking at a real game log of about 10 games in those 10 games he averaged five and a half receptions which is the dip down from a guy like Devontae Adams 81.3 yards and 0.7 touchdowns per game which were good enough to be like a top three four fantasy wide receiver in terms of points per game just got to take into account the fact that Patrick Mahomes mistimed and was banged up and it's just wild when you think of the Chiefs like their top their quarterback their top wide receiver their top running back all missed time if not significant levels of time and they still just shitted on the rest of the NFL I'm not going to use the word shat they shitted on the rest of the NFL and won the Super Bowl with all of those key pieces missing. Like, it's just crazy how good this team is and is going to continue to be with Patrick Mahomes under there. Now, Hill is a game breaker in fantasy. That's the reason you want him on your team, right? He's a much better half PPR and standard pick than he is full PPR because, again, he's not getting the target numbers or the reception totals that a guy like Devontae Adams is getting in his style of play. But I expect much closer to that 2018 statistic statistical season next year than I do the 2019 where he was up around 1500 1600 yards involved in the running game doing a lot of end arounds being a very very shifty player a lot of touchdowns scored Uh, and at the end of the day I mean Hill is unlike any player that we've seen come through the NFL at this point he's attached to the best passing quarterback in the game and they're in an elite offensive scheme so I, I you could talk about inconsistencies but the floor for Hill is still very very high as a fantasy option and the one concern that people might have and I guess it's warranted is Miko Hardman Hardman actually made the Pro Bowl last year uh, as a returner so he made the Pro Bowl as a rookie which is really really impressive but I believe all the reports I'm seeing is they're actually trying to bring in other players to operate as the return man to get Miko Hardman more involved in the actual passing game through 16 games in which he only started five of them. He caught 26 passes, 538 yards, and six touchdowns. Six touchdowns on 26 receptions. 20.7 yards per reception. Every time he caught the ball, he's going for about 21 yards. I believe it was uh, Ian Harditz from Roto World on one of their recent podcasts said, and I quote, nine receptions of 20 plus yards on only 26 receptions, 41 targets. I'm gonna repeat that. Nine receptions of 20 plus yards on 26 receptions. That's absurd. That's 35% of his total catches are going for over 20 yards. If he plays more of a receiver role, assuming he jumps both Sammy Watkins and Demarcus Robinson on the depth chart, don't get it twisted. He was fourth among wide receivers in snaps and routes run last year. So he still does need to jump these guys on the depth chart. But if he does, it could eat into that week over week, you know, Hail Mary opportunity for a guy like Tariq Hill. But I mean, I, I still think that's a bit of a stretch because we've seen Mahomes connect with so many people on deep passes and deep touchdowns, and it hasn't really affected. Tyreek Hill's numbers overall so Hill is a guy whose bottom line is going to be there maybe it's week over week inconsistency but that does mean that the weeks that he does hit that top tier is going to be week winning week so Tyreek Hill wide receiver one he's my wide receiver three overall and I think we'll move on to the wide receiver four which is Julio Jones Atlanta Falcons currently he's starting to fall to a little bit of a discount I've seen him in a lot of best ball drafts drop to like the 208 to the 2010 range and i'll scoop him there fucking 10 out of seven days a week if you guys are if anyone's interested in in joining us for best ball drafts we got the whole big dogs community fucking ripping off best ball drafts left and right we're using drafters now drafters.com and if you sign up with the promo code bdge when you deposit you will get a 50 percent deposit match so throw 10 but <coughs> excuse me excuse me Throw 10 bucks in, use promo code BDGE. You'll get 15 bucks to play with. You could do 15 $1 drafts with us on drafters.com. Once you do, you could add me. I believe my username is Nick underscore BDGE. I'll link it on the screen. So you guys can add me and then I'll invite you to the drafts that we do. Now, Julio is strictly out at number four, really for no good logical reason, other than we know for a fact, father time always wins. His downfall is coming. And this is not me predicting that it's going to be this year. Maybe it is this year. Maybe it's next year. Maybe it's in 2022. Maybe it's in fucking 3022 for all I know. The point I'm making here is while these guys are all in the same tier, Julio, Tyreek, Devontae Adams, Michael Thomas, however you want to rank them is up to you. But the fact that we know for damn certain father time is a negative 
and it will catch up to everybody. Julio Jones is the only one actually facing that overarching theme here. And if you can get guys who are going to produce around the same level and be just as consistent, why not just take one of the other guys who is not about to return or not about to have his decline or his fall off? And again, we don't know if that's Julio, if that's going to happen with Julio. He, he showed no signs of that actually happening last year. So if you want to take him as literally, if you want to take him as wide receiver one, I'm not going to argue that against you. Again, these guys are all in the same tier for me. If you want to take, I probably would argue against you if you took him as the one, but if you took him as two, if you took him as three, definitely no arguments for me. But for me, I'm just, I'm probably going to take him as the fourth wide receiver off the board, just because eventually it's going to happen. I don't see a reason to take that unnecessary risk when you can get a guy like Devontae Adams or a Tyree kill. But if he drops the 208 or 210, fucking bing, bang, boom, hit that fucking cop button. Now we did not see a drop off again from Julio last year, finished with 1,394 yards. If he had played the full 16 games, he only played 15. He would have hit 1,400 yards for the sixth straight year. He would have hit back-to-back 100-yard seasons. Another disappointing season in the touchdown category with just six. But like Adams... Julio probably does have that wide receiver overall one upside. This offense is still under Dirk Cutter, which sucks, but it's going to pass like crazy. They have Austin Hooper gone, Devonta Freeman gone, Muhammad Sanu gone. The Falcons have the single most targets per game available in their offense. 16 targets a game are now available because those three players left. Obviously, Hayden Hurst coming in, Todd Gurley coming in are going to make up for the majority of the players that catch those passes or Edo Smith, whoever involves as the pass catching running back here. And I actually think personally, Calvin Ridley, this is going to be the year that he really pops off and he is the one who benefits the most from all those targets popping up but that's for another video later on in the wide receiver rankings video it just can't be viewed as a negative thing for Julio with all these targets popping up so overall yeah Dirk Cutter still being here very pass heavy another bad defensive year I was looking at their schedule it's like 75 percent of the games that they have on the schedule might honestly be shootouts this year so Matt Ryan 4,600 passing yards probably again Julio Jones another 1,400 1,500 receiving yards can't get in the end zone so say what you want about that but Julio's up there in that top tier and that will round out the top tier. I know it was a short video again for you guys, but I wanted to get these guys out of the way before I dive into the grit and hit you with the big facts on wide receivers five through 10. I do want to know who you guys have as wide receiver five. I tweeted this out yesterday and got like a hundred responses from it. A lot of DeAndre Hopkins is a lot of Chris Godwin's a lot of even DJ Moore's Kenny Galladay's. So I just think there's a big tier gap between these top four and whoever you have at five. And I know a lot of people are going to get big, big mad that DeAndre Hopkins is not in here, but I have my reasons why and as always I will break them down in depth in next episode it might be Thursday I might just do a mock draft on Thursday and then do the next wide receiver rankings on Tuesday but I hope you all enjoyed this quick episode hit that thumbs up if you did subscribe to the channel if you want everything fantasy football for the rest of your life and uh, please, again, I would love if y'all would check out the Y.E. Yellen podcast which hopefully is up on iTunes already if it's not then it will be linked in the next video for y'all a little personal project of mine so i appreciate any of the support on that and if you want the top 24 running back rankings that link will also be in the description everything i talk about is always in the goddamn description i'll, I'll stop saying that i love y'all i hope you guys had a good memorial day weekend i'll see you tomorrow on bunk bed breakdown <laughs>